Hi everybody, here's our question. Imagine that you work for NASA and are working on a space probe intended to land on a small asteroid, as indeed various space agencies have done. Now the probe will approach the asteroid at a relative speed of 4 kilometers per second, pretty fast, um, but that's a fairly typical orbital speed. It will then fire its ion drive to slow it down. Um, ion drives are um, very low thrust drives, which can fire for a very long time using only small amounts of fuel. They can't get you anywhere fast, um, but they are very useful. Anyway, your plan is to have your space probe slow down to a stop just when it reaches the surface of the asteroid, thus ensuing no destruction. And we've been asked to calculate how far from the surface the probe should be when the ion drive is turned on. So presumably there's going to be some sort of distance sensor on the probe, but when it measures the distance at a certain value, it will switch the ion drive on, and hopefully everything will work from there. Probe has a mass of 500 kilograms, so that's fairly small for these sort of probes, and the ion drive supplies a whopping thrust of 1.3 newtons. And indeed, the gravity of the asteroid is too small to matter, which is pretty much true for most small asteroids. Okay. Okay, let's draw a diagram. So we have an asteroid and a space probe. Travelling at a speed V here, and it's got a distance D here to travel. Um, we want to work out what force here is going to be necessary to slow it to a stop. Now we could do this in a variety of ways. There are equations telling you um, distance times force, but the easiest way to do this is by energy and work. Um, because what you know is a force and a distance. The definition of work is just force times distance, and that's going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy, a, cha a change in energy. In this case, we start off with kinetic energy, and that kinetic energy must go away. So you can just say force times distance equals the initial kinetic energy, half mv squared. So that tells you that the distance is going to be mv squared over 2d. And you solve the problem. You could use an equation like you know, v squared equals u squared plus 2as, but why would you bother when the work way is so quick? So if we plug in numbers, we end up with d equals um, 3.07 by 10 to the 9 meters, which is rather large. Um, let's check plausibility of this. Um, this over here is about 3 million kilometers, which is pretty big. Um, but then you are trying to slow down a space probe with very little force. I mean, a force of 1.3 newtons would uh, barely lift a packet of biscuits off the table. So that's, considering a packet of biscuits weighs 200 grams, so G times 200 that would, um, wouldn't be enough. So maybe it's plausible to be very long, and uh, it's not too bad. The Earth is 10 to the 11 metres from the Sun, roughly speaking, so it's less than that. You wouldn't want to have to cross the entire solar system to slow down. Um, it's 100 times smaller than that, so that's probably vaguely plausible, though maybe a little uncomfortably large. Let's check the form of this equation. So we've got d here equals mv squared over d. Sorry, I got that wrong. Um, that should be mv squared over f on the bottom. That's better. Now, is this plausible? Well, it's got mass on the top here, which means if the space probe weighs more, it's going to need a larger distance. That makes sense. Um, v is on the top, and so that also makes sense. If the space probe is going further, it will take longer to slow down. And f is on the bottom, which also makes sense. The more powerful your ion thruster is, the less distance it takes. So, it's functionally okay, and this number is roughly okay. They may be a little uncomfortably large, so I think this is a, a reasonably plausible answer. <laughs>